Good morning, everyone. I am Council Member Lynn Shulman, Chair of the New York City Council's Committee on Health. Before I start, I want to acknowledge the Vallone family who is here today. Um, I am joined by Council Members Menon, Zhuang, Narcisse, <laughs> Powers, uh, wait, I'm sorry, Ariola, Mamorado, Feliz, and uh, Jaeger, and we're also joined by a public advocate. Did I miss anything? Oh, and we also have um, James Gennaro on Zoom. It is with deep sadness that we acknowledge the recent passing of former New York City Council member Paul Vallone, a dedicated public servant and passionate advocate for animals. Mr. Vallone's commitment to improving the welfare of animals in New York City was exemplified by his instrumental role in passing significant legislation during his tenure. One of his most impactful achievements was the successful passage of Local Law 123 of 2018, which mandated the establishment of full-service animal shelters in all five boroughs by July 2024. This landmark legislation has not only enhanced the city's capacity to provide comprehensive care for animals, but has also significantly improved the overall animal welfare landscape. In honor of Paul Vallone's unwavering dedication to the well-being of animals, we will be officially designating the new 50,000-square-foot Animal Care Center facility in Queens as the Paul A. Vallone Queens Animal Care Center. This gesture not only serves as a fitting tribute to a man who tirelessly championed the cause of our four-legged friends, but also as a lasting reminder of his enduring legacy in creating a more compassionate and humane city for everyone. As we mourn the loss of a true advocate, let us also celebrate the positive impact Paul Vallone had on the lives of countless animals and the communities he served. The Queens Animal Care Center, bearing his name, will stand as a testament to his commitment to creating a more compassionate and animal-friendly New York City. I want to thank the Vallone family for being here today and for their support, strength, and dedication to improving the lives of all New Yorkers. Um, I want to go off script for a second and say that I've known the Vallone family for a very long time. I am a Queens member of the City Council, and Paul Vallone has been very instrumental in my um, tenure in Queens politics, which is a very long time. So I want to thank all of you for that. Um, I would now, uh, what we're going to do now is we're going to have some of the members speak and then we're going to have testimony from the family. I would now like to invite the public advocate, Jamani Williams, to make a statement. Thank you so much, Madam Chair. Uh, my name is Jamani Williams, I'm public advocate of the City of New York. I'd like to thank Chair Shulman and the members of the Health Committee for holding this hearing today. I had the great honor of serving alongside Paul Vallone during my tenure in New York City Council. His untimely passing is a great loss, not only to his friends, family, and loved ones, but also to the communities he uplifted and the lives he touched. From his time in the council to his time as Deputy Commissioner for External Affairs at the Veterans Services Department, Paul was a dedicated public servant. As a former council member, he led the com with confidence and fought for what he believed in, and as our Deputy Commissioner, he worked tirelessly on behalf of our city's veterans. Our city is stronger because of his work and efforts. I support this council's proposal to rename the Queens Animal Care Center as the Paul Avalon Queens Animal Care Center. Renaming the Queens location after Paul would be a fitting tribute to honor Paul's work in passing legislation to ensure that there is an animal shelter in every borough. Uh, I know his family is here. God bless you all. I got to serve with both him and uh, Peter Vallone. And I'm sorry, Peter, you guys fought the same fights, but he always did it with a smile. Um, and uh, this, the interactions I had with him are, are what we actually need uh, in this city, in this state, in this country. People being able to differ and doing it while respecting each other. Uh, Godspeed to Paul, to you all, and uh, he will be missed. So I wanted to make sure I was here to show my support. Thank you, public advocate. I also now want to ask uh, Council Member Keith Powers to make his statement. Thank you, Chair. Um, thank you guys for being here with us today. I think for many of us over the last few weeks, it's been tremendously difficult to deal with the news and the pain of losing such a dear friend to the city council, a dear personal friend, and without question, a friend to this entire city. Uh, I had the honor and privilege of serving with Paul, becoming his friend even before I got here into the city council, but also have the tremendous privilege of knowing the Valones and the Constantinopoles for almost more than a decade now. And with Peter Sr., Peter Jr., and Paul, we have had a long-standing legacy here in the City Council of having a Vallone presence, 
uh, but having the good nature and the hard work that they bring to this city and this job every single day. And Paul was the true embodiment of that. Peter would always tell all of us, I worked for the Vones that you know, Peter would always tell us just the most important thing was to do the right thing. And I think that Paul carried that with him every single day in the city council, no matter whether it was politically popular or something that he had a you know, tussle with, I think he was driven by the, that kindness that his father handed down to his entire family and handed down to Paul's kids and family as well, which is to do what's right at all times. And uh, the Valones, famously when Peter was speaker, would be home to be with his family to have dinner almost, it seems, every single night. And I will tell you, and I want to tell this to, to his kids, when I got the news about Paul, the first thing I did was think about you guys, and I knew every single one of your names. I don't think we've ever met, but I knew him because Paul, uh, Paul talked about you guys every single instance he had. And anybody who knew Paul knew about you guys because of how much he loved and talked about you guys at the job, off the job, and everywhere else. We're gonna put Paul's name on a building today, and that will be a permanent way to remember his legacy. But in this body, I want to let you know, it's much bigger than that. Paul was a fantastic guy who brought something to this job every single day that I know me and anybody who got the chance to serve with him remembers, which is to smile every time you do this job, no matter how hard it is, always do the right thing and make sure you're there for your family all the time. Thank you, guys. By the way, I also want to acknowledge some family friends, Michael Sereo and Anthony Constantinople, who is a partner in the Valone Law Firm. I want to ask if any of my colleagues would like to make a statement. Council Member Menon. Um, so I unfortunately did not have the pleasure of serving at the same time as Paul, but I know him for many years. He was such a wonderful man, and I just want to extend my deepest condolences to the family. I think this is such a beautiful and fitting tribute. Um, animals bring such joy and compassion and love to people's life, and that's what Paul did. He was one of the kindest people and always had a smile on his face, and so I think this is a unbelievably beautiful and fitting tribute. Um, for us to be able to do, to remember and honor your father's legacy. Council Member Narcisse. Well, I did not serve with Paul, but one thing we have in common before we, we start talking is just smiling and laughing. And um, that's why I've known him by. And another thing, because I've been involved in politics since I was very on, 19 years old. And every time we've seen each other, even when the grandfather was serving, is just um, amazing people, good people. And I benefit their office, which I love to change things around. His office, and I have done anything to that office because he left it very clean, very nice. So um, another thing, on behalf of my two cats, uh, Zena and Sugar, we're gonna make sure that we get a visit to the center as well because when it comes to the love and the heart and the service, he has it. So thank you for sharing him. Thank you. Thank you, Chair. Thank you. Any other member wanna make comments? No? Okay. So now with that, I'll turn the mic over to committee council. Thank you. Thank you, Chair. We're now gonna to move to um, public testimony. First, we'll hear from um, Peter Vallone, Jr. Thank you. Mr. Mani, I've heard about his smile and my lack of a smile about 5,000 times in the last month. It's 100% true. I am smiling today, though. Um, and uh, I am speaking before my goddaughter because I've learned in a very short time that never to follow Leah when she speaks. She's in Fordham Law School. She's already probably a better attorney than the rest of the, rest of the family. Um, and you'll hear from her after me. Uh, thank you, Claire Schulman. Um, I'm sorry, Claire, Chair. I meant Chair Schulman, and it came out Claire Schulman. Um, Chair Schulman. I never realized that. Um, Speaker Adams, uh, Jumani, all the council members who came out today uh, as a former chair of, of uh, the Public Safety Committee, I'm very impressed with the turnout and the promptness. It doesn't, I know how, how rarely that happens. Um, but uh, I am also uh, speaking on behalf of my father. Uh, he wanted, really wanted to be here today. He's in the hospital. Um, and uh, my brother Perry's with him, or they would both both be here. Um, so I'm testifying today as a former council member. I want to let you know a little bit about the legislative history that, that got us all today, because it is actually very interesting. Um, but I'm testifying mostly as a proud older brother um, and uncle and godfather. Uh, so this fight for shelters in every borough started in 2000. And right in this room, my mother testified 
probably right over there, there was a picture of the table that's over there usually with her testifying at it. Um, and the speaker, my father, introduced a bill requiring a shelter in every borough. Mom testified, um, and last night at 10 p.m., my daughter Casey found my mother's testimony um, and took a picture of it, sent it over to me, so I'm just gonna give a, a little portion of it. She said, right here in this room, for every dog or cat adopted, four are euthanized, 40,000 are killed each year. This is a crisis and strong measures have to be taken. The pounds, shelters, and humane societies are overwhelmed. The law you are considering is a major step in the right direction to reverse this terrible trend. The shelter program will provide a full service shelter in every borough and will allow for humane adoptions and ensure a clean and safe environment for the animals and for those that administer to them. Speaking of those that administer to them, I know some of the animal rights advocates are here today. They were very helpful throughout this. Michelle Villagomez is still around. I think she's testifying. She worked with my brother and myself and my dad back in the day. Um, and uh, very pleased that they're here uh, in support. So the bill passed and a shelter was being built in every borough. It was built in three boroughs, uh, but it was never built in Queens and it was never built in the Bronx. So a lawsuit was brought, brought by many people, including those same animal rights advocates to try to force the mayor to build the, the, uh, the shelters. Rather than build the shelters, uh, on the day of a stated meeting, two weeks before uh, the lawsuit was going to be decided in court, and, and it was obviously going to be decided in the, in the council's favor, he prevailed upon the speaker, who shall not be named but rhymes with Finn, um, who passed a bill that day to eliminate the requirement for a shelter in every borough. And uh, in res so I found out about it the day of the stated and couldn't stop it, obviously. I uh, put the bill back in later on. It never moved, obviously. And um, uh, that was that. So uh, we, we kept up the fight, the entire family. And with Paul's help in 2013, uh, I I proposed and the council passed an animal abuse registry, which is now first of its type in the, in the entire country, being copied worldwide. Um, and in fact, the mayor vetoed that too. And he vetoed that right before term limits took place. So we actually didn't even have time to override the veto. So 2013, uh, 14 actually, because uh, Paul alone is elected. First thing he does is gets the new council to override the mayor's veto of the animal abuse registry, and that's why we have that today. Um, and um, the second thing he does is reintroduce the shelter in every borough bill. Didn't move for the first four years, but then Corey Johnson became speaker, and uh, he and Paul were very close. They worked together very closely, and Paul, Corey said, what's your priority? Paul said, this bill, the animal shelter in every borough bill. Um, and here we are, and we're naming the shelter uh, after the person most responsible for it. Um, and I can't think of a better tribute to him. Um, in fact, I, this is the city council's idea. You guys came up with it, and we are hugely thankful that you did that um, and are doing that today. Uh, and I'm going to, um, I mean, I'm, I'm smiling, Jumani, but it's hard through, through the tears as I think of, as I think of how happy Paul would be right now, especially to see his family here and to hear his daughter testify. So that's what I want to hear. So I'm going to now finish up. Thank you for all your time and effort. Um, and glory my God, child, Leah Vallone. That's it. Thank you to my wonderful godfather, and thank you all for your such amazing and kind words. When I was little, I wanted to be a veterinarian until I took chemistry and decided law was more my thing, but that's besides the point. This passion stemmed from my father, who taught me to love all creatures, no matter how big or small. In return, I can't think of an animal that did not love him back. It was as if they were able to sense his pure soul and kindness instinctually. Whether it was hermit crabs, hamsters, birds, carnival fish, or snails, he cared for whatever we brought home with open arms. My dad taught our family how to appreciate the
the beauty of nature in a way few truly understand. His care towards animals reflects fundamental parts of himself. To love selflessly, to understand without words, to give with no expectations. While there are countless examples of his acts of service, I'll give one. I returned home from college and found a strange, borderline aggressive stray cat under my bed. Of course, he was out in the rain and my dad felt bad. Aside from a temporary reprieve, he made sure Rocco found a forever home. If his devotion to making a difference for the most simplest of beings was sprinkled around, the, the world would be a much better place. I know he is with us today smiling as we take one step closer to accomplishing this goal. He was so proud of his effort in finally getting this shelter built and making sure that there is one in every borough, an idea dreamed by my grandmother. As he remarked in 2016, if, were, if it were its own city, Queens alone would rank as the nation's fourth largest. It is unacceptable that no animal shelter currently exists. This is for his childhood cats, Cleo, Missy, Piccolo, Pixie, and Tomcat. This is for our family's assorted animals over the years, Ziggy, Hercules, Rosamund, Theodore, Jon Snow, Ron, and of course, Daisy, who is still waiting for her best friend to come home. This is for the countless animals my dad will continue to help for years to come, thanks to his dedicated work to this city. And most of all, this is for Paul, whose guiding light and heart has impacted us all for the better. Thank you so much. Do any other family members would like to speak? Yes, no? You sure? Go ahead. I just wanted to thank you all for everything. Um, keeping his memory alive, he was just such a compassionate and beautiful person. And I'm so happy that um, some, if not most of you, were able to meet with him and work with him and um, remember him um, as the most amazing person we know. And I just, again, wanted to thank you for everything. No, th thank you. Thank you very much. I also just want to say that, um, so I ran three times for city council, one the third time. Uh, the first two times I ran as an insurgent, so I didn't have county support, and Paul kept encouraging me and meeting with me and telling me, you can do it, you can do it, don't worry about them. Um, and I actually worked for another council member who uh, worked under your father, uh, Peter uh, Sr., and so I knew the whole family. and. Um, this, I also want to tell you that I'm a member of the budget negotiating team, so when I came into the council and I was assigned as chair of the health committee, um, Peter, you know this, um, so B&T, you get to really shape how the budget's going to be. Uh, so there was this amount of money for the Queen's ACC Center, and so people were like, well, that's so much money, maybe we should move it, and this and that, and I fought like hell to make sure that that money, the last two cycles, stayed in so that we could do this. So, um, and I'm very proud of doing that. Uh, and with that, we're gonna call up some other folks to testify and please, please stay and, and, and listen, thank you. Thank you so much to the Vallone family for being here. We're going to hear from Michelle Via Gomez from ASPCA, if you could please come up. You can proceed. Uh, thank you so much for letting me have the opportunity to say something. I'm going to go off script for a second. Um, I was looking at the hearing transcripts to see what Paul said, and, and he was an ally of the ASPCA going back generations, back to his mother, and just how special a person he was. In his remarks when this bill passed committee, he remembered that I just had a baby. And in there, it was saying, calling out my son Mateo by name, saying, there's a new advocate for animals. I hope the shelters are open before Mateo starts school. That being said, Mateo's in first grade, <laughs> and we're very excited that this year we're going to see the Queen's Animal Care Center open in Paul's name, and that was just sort of like a little detail that he just remembered um, that we were all sort of a human being, sort of advocating um, for good things, and, and he was just such a special person. 
um, that sort of got to be what I was looking at and seeing that he remembered my son and then had a whole conversation with me about it. Um, so good morning, I'm Michelle Villagomez. I'm the Legislative Senior Director for the ASPCA. I wanna thank everyone, uh, Chairman Shulman, uh, Speaker Adams. I'm really honored to provide testimony in support of this legislation. Uh, Paul was a wonderful ally in our work and I really genuinely collabor uh, enjoyed collaborating with him. Um, I'm a resident of Queens, lifelong, and now I live in what was his district. Um, I believe that this renaming would be a fitting tribute to a man who dedicated himself to the well-being of both animals and the communities he served. Um, as, as Peter Vallone just said, the commitment runs um, for a very long sort of lineage in the Vallone family. It was a personal passion, but a continuation of his family's legacy. The Vallone family has long been synonymous with advocating for the welfare of animals in New York City. Councilmember Vallone, uh, his father, Speaker Peter Vallone, played a pivotal role in passing legislation in 2000. Um, his mother, Tina Vallone, demonstrated unwavering dedication as a volunteer in various animal welfare initiatives throughout, his year, throughout the years. And Councilmember Peter Vallone was a staunch advocate against animal cruelty. And Paul carried this torch forward with great fervor. When he championed this legislation to ensure that all boroughs have access to full service animal shelters, he did it in recognition that shelters are not merely facilities for housing stray pets, but vital community resources offering a wide array of services, including surrender prevention, food assistance, medical care, humane education, and adoption programs. He understood that by supporting animal welfare, we also support the well-being of our communities. His vision for the Queens Animal Care Center was one of inclusivity and compassion where both animals and people could find the assistance and resources that they needed. Renaming the center in his honor would not only commemorate his dedication and hard work, but also serve as a reminder of the profound connection between human and animal welfare. Every time I met with him, he always asked one question what can we do with the kids in my district? And it was a, a, like, what can we do? Can we bring adoption vehicles? Can we do some humane education? How can we spread the word about the human-animal bond? Um, we'd love to see that. The new facility um, under its new name is gonna serve as a lasting reminder of Paul's legacy of empathy, kindness, and commitment to making our world a better place. In conclusion, I urge the committee and the council to support this initiative, which I, I see that you are and ensure that the legacy continues to inspire and uplift us all. We have to continue to invest in advancing the services provided by animal care centers throughout the city of New York and make sure that the compassionate spirit lives on. Thank you. Thank you very much. This concludes in-person testimony. At this time, we, we will be moving to virtual testimony. Uh, we will be hearing from Ali Taylor. Please wait for the Sergeant at Arms queue before you begin your testimony. Starting time. Thank you and good morning, everybody. Um, thank you to Speaker Adams for introducing this bill and thank you to um, Health Committee Chairperson Shulman and the Health Committee for the opportunity to honor the memory of Council Member Paul Vallone. My name is Allie Taylor and I'm the president of Voters for Animal Rights here in New York City. This legislation is such a fitting way to ensure that Paul Vallone's legacy and spirit of advocating for homeless animals and the people who care for them will live on forever. I will never forget that day in June of 2018 when Paul's bill passed mandating full service animal shelters be built in every borough, uh, which was incredibly needed considering that Queens and the Bronx had no full service animal shelter at all. Council member Vallone fought for over a decade to make this happen alongside his brother. And now, thanks to him, Queens and the Bronx will finally have equal access to an adoption center, low-cost vet care, humane education, dog training, a pet food pantry, a lost and found, and a surrender prevention counseling unit. I have many fond memories, um, one of which was getting a call from Paul when he found a stray orange cat in his neighborhood, and he didn't hesitate to drop everything he was doing and bring the cat indoors whether it was shelter pets, wildlife, horses, or animals in the circus, Paul unapologetically stood up for the animals and never backed down, even when he was challenged by those who couldn't understand why there was such a need to protect our city's animals. 
As a trap neuter release uh, cat rescuer myself, I know the difficulties that rescuers face. So I can't stress enough how impactful the opening of the Bronx and Queens animal shelters will be for generations to come, thanks to the work of Paul Vallone. In, on behalf of the cat rescue community, thank you for honoring his memory through the official naming of the Paul A. Vallone Queens Animal Care Center. Thank you very much, Allie. We really appreciate your testimony. Um, a couple things. One, I want to acknowledge um, Councilmember Gail Brewer has joined us uh, earlier. Jonathan Schott, who is now the uh, Chief of Staff to Councilmember Menon, was Chief of Staff to Paul Vallone, so I want to acknowledge, oh, there you are. I want to acknowledge him. I also want to tell you how, just to show you how important Paul was to all of us, this is the first time that I have had full quorum here for this committee um, this year. So just that shows you what, le what, he, what he meant and what his legacy is. And I'll um, turn it over to, what are we doing? Does anybody, I just want to ask, any of my other colleagues just want to make a statement, last call? No? Okay. So that we're going to go to a vote. Thank you. Good morning. William Martin, committee clerk, will call vote committee on health on proposed introduction 1B. Chair Schulman. I proudly vote aye. Yeager. Aye. Gennaro. Feliz. Madam Chair, I wish to speak on my vote. Madam Excuse Chair. Me. That's Member Gennaro. Thank you. Uh, I, uh, um, Madam Chair, am I recognized to speak? Yes. Okay. Uh, uh, thank you very much. And uh, I'm sorry that um, a doctor appointment is keeping me from being there in person. I, um, uh, I want to salute the Vallone family who I've known for 34 years. I was, um, you know, I was hired by Peter 34 years ago, and uh, um, it's been a wonderful journey to know the Vallone family and um, my colleague Peter, my colleague Paul, and um, Anna Marie, and 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 his wonderful family. I look forward to seeing the Vallone family and and uh, Charlie on retreat this year and um, uh, is happy day, a sad day. And um, um, again, I, I echo the words of many that have said that this is such a great fitting tribute to, to Paul and indeed it is. And um, I'm happy that his good efforts brought this forward. Um, uh, I, I, I've been very inspired by, you know, Tina's passion and everyone in the Vallon family's passion for animals. Um, we're running a little animal shelter here in, in our home. We have um, our cat and four, four foster cats and two cats living in the backyard in heated cat condos um, with three squares a day. And, um, you know, once you get into it, there's no going back. And, um, uh, so a, a fitting day to uh, honor Paul, to be inspired by Paul and the Vallone family, and to do what we can on behalf of the animals that we're graced to share the planet with. And um, uh, God bless Paul, God bless the Vallone family, and uh, thank you to all my colleagues and those that testified in favor of this um, wonderful, uh, you know, wonderful bill today. And uh, I proudly vote aye. Thank you. Thank you. Feliz. Uh, proudly vote aye. Congratulations to the family. De La Rosa. Menin. I proudly vote aye. Narcisse. Happily aye. Zhuang. Aye. Ariola. I proudly vote aye. Give you my deepest condolences. Having known Paul and all of you, I know the type of love you shared between each other, among each other, and the love that he put out when he came here into this room. 
And if I could say there was one lesson that I learned from being a friend of Paul Vallone's, it is you can disagree without being disagreeable. And that's something that I take with me when I'm now in the chair here making decisions as a city council member. My prayers are with you and your family. Thank you. Mama Rato. I vote aye, and I'm very sorry for your loss. With a vote of nine in the affirmative, zero in the negative, and no abstentions, uh, introduction is adopted by the committee. Okay, now I'm gonna close it out. Congratulations, we're gonna have a new building. I, ho I hope and expect everybody to be at the opening of that building, which is gonna happen fairly soon. Uh, and with that, I close it out, thank you.